Have you started your podcast yet? Let me help you out. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast to stream on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Best of all, it is 100% free and you can record and edit from your phone or computer. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors who wants to advertise on your podcast. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by recording this ad. So be sure to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started and let your voice be heard. Grand Rising, and welcome back to another episode of the Miss Unconventional Podcast. I am Melinda J on YouTube, and today's topic is going to be about finding the meaning of life. But first, let's go ahead and pay these bills right quick. self-care card for today is optimism it says if you're going to make up stories in your head about the people and circumstances please make them love stories with happy endings all right you guys and welcome back So now, about today's topic, the source that it's coming from is from psychologytoday.com, and the author, I don't want to butcher her name, but if I'm pronouncing it right, it is Ase Yemi Single, and she she has a PhD, and she's a researcher as well as an instructor at Harvard University. And I'll be sure to leave her name in the description box so you can be able to find the article and be able to read it upon your leisure. But, of course, let's get to it. So the key points that it is stating upon the article that I read on this, there's three key points, and it says work is typically considered an essential source of meaning and purpose in life. And second point is leaving work could imply a decline in meaning in life, but also offer opportunities to engage in more meaningful activities. And point number three is boost in purpose upon retirement, mostly driven by lower social economic status adults, and occurs within four years after retirement so i also when i was reading upon this article which was uh last year (laughs) around the time that the article had came about um it stated as well this particular fact that came across my notification which was via Twitter, um, it came across as Texas becoming the job quitting capital of the U.S. while employers continue to add more jobs. And that was as of the 20th of December of 2021, last year. And the source that came from that was the Houston Chronicles. And then the Houston Chronicles got their data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So you can only imagine. (laughs) And I can only imagine on people quitting their jobs and retiring er early due to the circumstances of what is going on as of right now. Um, So the summary... Within this article states, the human search for meaning is strongly intertwined with our relationship with work. And so I'm going to go for with the first key point and then break it down and then give my little two cents on it. So the first point, as stated before, it says work is typically considered an essential source of meaning and purpose in life. But... However, is it? 
2018, according to the article, American Trends Panel did an open question about what makes their lives more meaningful. And this was at least approximately 4,867 adults. And the top score was scored as family being um, what makes their lives meaningful at 69%, while 34% mentioned that their careers are more meaningful in their lives. So I have to pose this question as to, do you feel the same way now than you did four years ago, as the article has stated and based off um, panel and data research? And this panel was done in 2018, so before the um panorama (laughs) so I have to ask you all this and I ask myself this all the time because I can get caught up in that realm too where um I feel like I feel like I need some some type of status to be able to be uh considered important per se Compared to now, it's just like, well, I've always been a family-oriented person, but now it's just like detrimental, especially after, you know, assisting caregiving my grandfather for the past year and a half. Um, So I have to ask you all this is, do you feel the same way now than you did four years ago as far as like um, either family being more meaningful in your lives or your career because as of right now it seems like family is more meaningful in people's lives now instead of the career due to the fact of the great resignation period between I'll say between uh 2019 and now but it really started going to a domino effect around uh 2020 so That's just a question that I will leave you all to ponder in your mind. And also, within the 1990s, the Gallup data, um, it says 55% of co-workers in the U.S. consistently reported deriving a sense of identity from their job, as opposed to viewing their jobs as something that they do for a living. So... My question to you all with that one is, do you let your job or status define you? Almost like saying, you make the money, don't let the money make you if you get my drift, if you know what reference that came from. (laughs) But do you let your job or status define you as a person? Because in the day, day and age of social media, Uh, When it comes to getting sponsorships, deals, uh, looking for a job, looking for work, it seems like you, it seems like everyone, including myself, let their job or status define them because it brings some sorts of relevancy in, you know, branding yourself when it comes to getting those contracts, those deals, those sponsorships. So I have to ask you all this as well. Do you let your job or status define you? And also, do you let money make you or define you? And if not, you know, comment down below and let me know. So on to the second point within the article. And that point was leaving work could imply a decline and meaning in life but could also uh, lead to opportunities to engage more in meaningful uh, activities excuse me not opportunities but it could be opportunities as well Um, so within the article it says it also posed the question of how people's sense of purpose in life changes upon retirement in most cases, the cause could be illness or bereavement or as or it could be reaching your peak of executing a job. So 
which one of those um how um, I, I have to ask people that are you know either retired voluntarily or retire involuntary I have to ask that question to you all as to what led you to retiring was it because of illness that came about or was it because of bereavement that came about or it was just that time that you know you have done all you could to fulfill your purpose Uh, with that particular job and you feel that there's something more out there that could reach to you in regards to having a a more meaningful and more purposeful life. So I have to ask you all that as well. Ponder on that, please, if you will. Um, The negative effects that can come with people retiring is that they go through substantial withdrawal from work, meaning that they are not in routine with getting up, going to work, doing the job, coming home, eating, drinking, uh, interacting with family just a little bit and going to sleep and doing that over again. It's, it's an immediate stop of operation if you per se. Meaning that their routine is not going to be the same anymore because now they have to figure out what they're going to do for the rest of their life now that they retire. Um, however, you can turn that negative effect to a positive effect. That positive can, effect can be, um, which also states within the article saying, a strong link between time use and well-being, which could be increased in social activities like charity events or um, sports that help keep you active and the joints moving and stuff, uh, as well as spending time with grandchildren and family members that you wasn't able to connect with on a daily basis. You have that free time now to interact with them, travel with them, and see what their likes and dislikes and build that strong relationship that you know that either when never was or it was but it wasn't as strong as it could be now um which can lead to reducing the risk of disease and longevity overall a sense of purpose arises from having goals and activities that give meaning of life meaning that whenever you are doing productive engagement with life whether it's doing those particular activities that i stated before it can bring it can bring you to a whole nother perspective of life and that you're living you're now living in the moment instead of just um constant go 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 or hustle 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 work hard play hard all that because because you've been doing that all your life Uh, compared to now if you were to retire or resign from a job that kept that consistency of a schedule and routine going um you know you just have to do to get by and there were times you were living in the moment, but at the same time, you were not living in the moment because you were steady trying to um, keep food and shelter and bills paid when it comes to either yourself alone as an individual or your family. So that's something to look about and think about. And lastly, to point three, uh, point three had stated... A boost in purpose upon retirement, mostly driven by lower uh, social economic status adults that occurs within the four years after retirement. So, how can you make the most uh, of your situation present? How can you be more present in your situation as of right now? Um, As of right now... There's a new variant out. People are getting sick. 
Um, even for folks who didn't expect that they were going to get sick, they're sick now. Um, hospitals are overwhelmed. People are continuing to resign from their jobs. Um, people are also creating new businesses and going after their passions as well. Um, so I will have to pose the question to you all. The third question is how can you make the most of your situation? How can you continue to live in the moment and be present within the situation that you're in now without hurting anybody, without hurting yourself or anybody um, that poses harm in any situation? Because you have to remember whenever one door closes, another one opens. Um, same as an opportunity. Whenever one opportunity ends, another one begins. Uh, it just depends on um, how you take it when it comes to that point whenever a door or an opportunity closes. Because one thing's for sure, you can reflect on how far you come. It gives you time to reflect on how far you have come and ac- accomplished so far. Um you can, you have time to rebuild relationships with family members and engage with them as well as engage in social activities, whether they're big or small, to keep you going. So I have to, you have to ask yourself that all the time because I know I do, uh, which is what can you do to bring heaven upon earth, um, bringing peace and tranquility along with your life as well as others that will bring that domino effect because one person cannot save the whole planet it's going to take an individual to act upon their actions in a um good and with a good intent as well as whenever it happens to that person as far as like spreading love, spreading peace, spreading happiness, all those sorts of things, being generous, whether it's monetary or not, um, it can lead to a trickle effect. But however, right now, since resources are scarce and everything else is scarce, you know, it's everybody is at the survival of the fittest mode. And I feel like as a world as us as the world we need to continue to ground ourselves and um be able to uh calm our minds to some capacity and recalibrate our minds to where we have some sort of compassion and understanding with each other because right now we don't everybody is literally survival of the fittest and is is just overwhelming and at this point it's just like you know things have got to change personally uh city-wise state-wise nationally globally things have to change for the better and in order for it to change for the better of course um, we everybody is going to be going through their storm, which is right now. Is everybody's going through, through their own storm, their own journey, whether it's spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, we just have to band together and figure this thing out because right now, majority of us are divided to some capacity. Excuse me. And I had written this article. Article. I have. I had read and written this article about a month ago, and it's taken me right now to actually express it and actually uh, get through this episode because um, I had my own sense of. Uh, holding discussions with my parents and my brothers and other people that I uh, come in contact with and just 
not only picking their brains, but also agreeing to disagreeing, having those deep in depth conversations, those honest in depth conversations, because there is a lot going on. And, um, and sometimes we have to sit back and actively listen to each other instead of always reacting, um, having that reactive response instead of just you know sitting there pondering about what the person is talking about actually listening what the person is talking about and then actually express health on uh, expressing your feelings and as well as your judgment in a healthy manner so um yes it has taken me a long periodically time <laughs> to get this episode out to you all and I appreciate your patience and your listen and your views um as you're listening to my voice um and I even tried to record it on my (laughs) that way I can give my visual learners you know I even try to put my face out there and it um to do this episode and for some reason it wouldn't let me so I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna have to rewrite this episode um and also record this episode again because it was I was all over the place after trying to do two things at one time but I'm gonna get it together that's a part of the process (laughs) of learning this podcasting and YouTube venture out you know you gotta uh, learn as you go and then ask and seek for help whenever you need it so um yes this is gonna be a short episode today Uh, I really hope you all had a great new year so far um happy new year to everyone that is listening uh today as I stated before, I've written in um, this episode about a month ago, and it took me a whole month later just to get this episode out, and that's because I've been going um, through my own self-reflection before I enter the new year in um, the best way possible. So... With that being said, uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe to the YouTube te- channel when you're watching this or viewing this on there. Feel free to leave a comment down below of the three questions that I posed upon this episode. Those are, um, how do you, do you feel the same way uh, now that you did four years ago when it comes to... Um, either family or career or both um, being meaningful to your life if so why not or uh, if not you know also state why Uh, question number two is do you let your job or your status define you and also do you make do you let the money make you or you make the money yourself as far as like do you let the money change you whenever you get a substantial amount of money or do you don't? And then the last question that I had is, uh, um, how can you make the most of your present situation? What can you do to spread love, joy, peace and happiness upon yourself and others? Because that is also part of the self-discovery, self-love, self-care journey is, you know, how would you make the most of your present situation? Even when it's good, even when it's bad, how would you make the most of it? And then also when it comes to the self-care cards, I did get another deck. So also I'm going to leave you with this little exercise that you could do because I just started it myself is, which is, um... I'm on week two of it and is to write a gratitude list, write, fi- write down five things that you're grateful about, any and everything that you're grateful about, and then keep it moving forward. And at the end of the month, you just reflect on how, on what you wrote down throughout the month, 
when it comes to uh, what you're grateful for, and it'll bring you a whole, it bring it, it will humble you back, uh, back to perspective. So, with that being said, be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel whenever you're viewing this video in podcast form. Be sure to uh, rate and subscribe if if you're listening to the episode. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm going to leave you all with this leave it on a good note segment. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. And that next episode will be about how to get over a breakup. So until next time. Uh, Love thyself, know thyself, soothe thyself will lead to heal thyself. Peace. All right, everyone, let's end on a good note with the chakra wisdom cards. And today's card is the seventh crown chakra, one with all. I feel the divine force flowing through me. I honor this and I know that it flows through all. I am calm in knowing that I am one with all and I contemplate and meditate on this fact. I regularly remind myself that we are all from the same source and that we are all on a journey as spiritual beings experiencing this physical essence. I'm aware I have a choice as to how I respond to what is happening in my life. My responses have an enormous effect on my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical well-being. I say to the ancestors, this completes the let's leave it on a good note segment.